Hello, everybody. Sorry, I'm just, just doing a smidgen of parenting. Oh, hello. Thank you, people who've liked this video. Um, right. I need a pan of boiling water. And that is it. Got all my plastic things. Yeah, right. Go and, go and, go and get my freshly boiled water and then we'll get started. Or something on the board. Have you have you got on with your how many words can you think of that start with mono and start with poly? I've got quite a few, although I had to look them up. <laughs> uh, let's see, I think about here. I'm just writing two on the board now. One of which you've probably heard of and one of which you haven't. There we go. Got matches. Yes, let's do this. Just the Murray nose blow. Right, actually, I'm not going to flip you straight away. I'll show you the answers. Are you all ready? I'm just giving the screen a little jiggle so the people who sort of fallen half asleep or are now stroking the dog or something like, oh, it's starting. Oh, look. Right. So. How many ways can you think of that start with mono or poly? Write them down and then have a guess at what mono and poly mean. Let's have a look. So I got, uh, well, mono is Greek for alone or single or like one. And poly is Greek for many. So you've probably heard of a polygon, right? A shape with many sides. There is such a thing as a monogon. Do not ask me. Couldn't understand what it was. It's like a circle, but not. It's a just complicated maths thing. Uh, Polynesia is a group of lots of islands. Nisha actually means island and poly means lots in the Pacific Ocean. Uh, a polyglot is my new favourite word, a person who speaks many languages. So I am a monoglot, uh, embarrassingly. Monochrome, made with a single colour. You might have heard of polyon saturates. They've got a lot of double bonds. We'll look at those in a minute. A monolith. This is very cool. I didn't, I've heard of a monolith. I knew that a monolith was a statue. I hadn't thought about the fact that lith means stone and mono means single, so it's a sort of sort of statue or something that's made with a single piece of stone. Monocle, single lens, monologue, speech by one actor. Ten points if you've got monopoly, but the poly means something else in that word. Mono, it's like one organisation or group controlling a thing. Okay, right, anyway, I'll flip you. Enough of the English lesson, although obviously English is brilliant and science involves all subjects, which is what we love about it. I'm flipping you. Hello, hello everyone. If you happen to be new, I can't imagine that you are, that would be quite weird, but hello if you're new. My name is Lara. This is Theory of Science Home Ed. It's our second materials lesson. But you don't have to have seen the first one. We learned a lot of words basically, and today we are going to apply some of those words to plastic. 
What is a better word for plastic? Well, the reason that we did that little activity at the beginning is because a, a better science word for plastic is polymer. What is a polymer? Well, to talk about that, we're going to talk about monomers, all right? So this follows on nicely from our um, like renewable energy lesson, because we looked a lot at fossil fuels, coal, oil, gas. We looked at how oil is teeny tiny little sea creatures and plants millions of years ago falling to the bottom of the ocean and being fossilised. So that's, if you dig down and find them, then you find oil. If you take that oil and you heat it up and then you do something called cracking it, you just get, you get monomers. They're basically just little particles, okay? I'm just going to draw them as shapes for a nice, easy beginning. So monomers are tiny little particles, right? They're all different kinds. Let's draw a different shape. So single particles, right? Mono, ma, single thing. And if you put them together in a long strip, then yes, you get polymers. So polymers are basically just very, very long strings of particles. Um, they're monomers all stuck together. You get it? So monomers are small particles, and when they join together, you get big particles, and a polymer is a thing that's made out of all these big particles. And that's quite enough of that. Whew, you get it, right? So I've drawn them in straight lines, but actually polymers are plastics, are polymers, and the particles in them are all kind of mixed up like spaghetti, incredibly long chains. You could have hundreds of monomers all in a row to make a polymer particle, but there could be thousands, there could be tens of thousands. Right, so should I show you that? No, let's get our chocolate on. So we're going to do an activity to sort of model like how plastics work, how you make plastics. So I, if you're doing it, do it with me now, and if you're not, then uh, maybe watch me and do it afterwards. Doing it afterwards would, would work well, actually. So I have some grated chocolate, and I have a pan of hot water with a plate on top. Don't you lift up a pan of hot water. Okay? It's heavy and it's hot. Be careful. I'm going to start by putting three piles of chocolate onto my pan, like this. One little pile. You want three separate piles of grated chocolate. When I did this lesson on Facebook, when I have comments, there were loads of people going, can I eat the chocolate? And I, I don't know. I can't see you, can I? You could have like toxic chemicals all over your hands. You could be sat in a bin. Ask an adult at home if you can eat it. And don't eat it yet because we're working with it. What's wrong with you? But, you know, obviously... If an adult says it's okay, then yeah. Right, so those are my three little piles of chocolate. We're going to let those melt and we'll talk a little bit more about monomers and polymers. We're kind of sort of pretending that the chocolate is a load of monomers. And hopefully you've got some margarine or butter. We'll pretend that that is a load of monomers as well. And if you've got some water, we'll pretend that that's a monomer. And we're going to mix the monomers together and see what happens. So... These shapes are nice, hopefully you've understood that. I'd better show you what they actually look like, right? So if, if I say plastics today, please shout at the screen until I say polymers, because that's really what I should be saying. So this is the simplest actual monomer that you can get. It's called ethene or ethylene. You could say either, because chemistry hates us. It's not, not really, but yeah, if you, I'm going to say ethene today, but if you look it up, you might find ethylene. It's the same thing, don't worry. So the simplest monomer that you can get, you might be able to tell, is two carbon particles, like two atoms of carbon, bonded together with four particles of hydrogen bonded to them around the edges, right? So uh, these lines are bonds. So if you notice, there's two bonds in the middle. The carbon particles in the monomer of ethene are double bonded, which is very good. We've actually kind of produced it to be this way because it means it's very reactive. So these double bonds quite easily pop open and form two single bonds so that the monocon monomer can join up with itself, right? So ethene makes, what do you think the monomer ethene makes when it gets all joined together? I like this bit. It makes polyethene, right? Loads of ethenes. Look at that, science, making sense. So polythene, which you've probably heard of, the plastic polythene, is lots of ethenes all together, yeah? Poly means lots of, lots of, lots of eth Am I too excited about this? Possibly. Right, um, so first of all, some of you have been to my Facebook group and printed off a sheet. If you haven't, don't worry about it. I always try and make it easy. What I want you to do is think about the properties, please, individually, of chocolate and water and margarine. Just fill in these little squares, only take a second. 
So last week we were talking all about the properties. The property of something just sort of means what it's like. So can you quickly write down what are the properties of chocolate, water and margarine? What are they like? I've given you some ideas. Are they solid or liquid at room temperature? Are they trapped? It's important to say room temperature, isn't it? Because obviously everything can be liquid if you heat it up enough. Is it transparent? You can see through it. Is it opaque? You can't see through it. What colour is it? Is it sticky or dry? Does it snap easily? We found out last week that if something's brittle, then it snaps easily. Shiny or not, toxic or non-toxic. And hopefully you've got your three little piles of grated chocolate slowly melting if you are doing the activity along with me. I'll give you 10 seconds because this isn't you know, this isn't learning about plastics, is it, this bit? But it, it's good to uh, start thinking about properties. And this leads us quite nicely into how polymers work. Plastics are polymers, yeah. Right. Mine has melted enough. I'm going to... No, but do I keep it on? Right, let's go through the answers. Uh, you might have said something completely different. That is absolutely fine. I've got that chocolate is solid at room temperature, it's brown, and it's dry, and it's brittle. I've put the water is liquid at room temperature, obviously, and it's transparent in it. You can see through it. And margarine, I've put that it's shiny and non-toxic and soft. If you were here last week, you might have heard the word malleable. Malleable is a great word, which means that if you push something, then it squishes, basically. So margarine is very malleable. Right, so now let's get some mixing on. So, I said to bring a few teaspoons. I'm going to take my water and plate apart now and put the pan of hot water somewhere very safe where I will not kick it. You may do the same. Okay, so let's leave one pile of chocolate as it is. We'll say that that's just that one kind of monomer on its own. And I'm going to get a teaspoon of, of butter, a knob of butter, it's a scientific term, or margarine, and mix it into one of the piles of chocolate. There we go. Right, so I'll leave that one as it is, and this one I will mix in some marge. Ah, oh, look at that. Come on. What fantastic telly. So satisfying. Mixy mix. So this would be, we could say, like two monomers mixing together. I suppose, for fairness, I'd better mix, uh, mix the little pile of chocolate on its own, hadn't I, so that we can see if there's any difference. So that's chocolate on its own. That's chocolate with margarine. And have you ever mixed water into chocolate? Oh, if you're doing this with me and you never have, I'm so excited for you. <laughs> it's great. Just get a tiny, like just a couple of drops of water. That might even be too much. I'll put one drop on. Boop. And give that a stir and see what happens. Might have to let it cool down a bit. Oh, look, can you see? What's going on? Oh, <laughs> am I too into this? No, look, that's weird, right? Were you expecting that to happen? So we added margarine to chocolate and we've got this, uh, well, what's going on here? It's very, very shiny. It's really shiny, isn't it? It's quite dark and it's very soft. You'll just have to take my word for it. If I keep stirring that, it will stay soft. And we've got this chocolate here, which is just behaving as you would expect warm chocolate to do, right? Let's have a look at how thick it is. So the chocolate pours off the spoon pretty easily. In physics, we would say that this is its viscosity. How thick is it? How viscous is it? Pretty viscous. What about the margarine one? Oh, definitely more viscous, right? It's thicker. Is that a liquid or a solid? You decide. Yeah, it's, it's dripping. So it's, I'd say it's more viscous. And the chocolate and water one, look at this. What's happened here? I'm just going to get in here for you. Look. I'll flip you. You've got a ball. They're like a little chocolate Play-Doh, right? If you're remembering some words from last lesson. Uh, no tissues in this room. Deep regret. Uh, you could say, what is a good word for what, what this, how this chocolate ball is behaving? Is it, uh, is it ductile? Can you roll it into a wire? Yeah, I think you can. I think it's pretty ductile. It's um, plastically deforming, okay? So that's chocolate and water. Right, very quickly then. Can you fill in the rest of the, well, fill in the next two boxes? Um, how are these things behaving? Are they any different? You ready? 
So that gives me a good opportunity to go and wash my hands as well. So you've written down the properties of chocolate and margarine and water. What are the properties of chocolate mixed with margarine and chocolate mixed with water, please? Just, I can't even open the door, it's covered in stickiness. move on so what did I put um, shiny and soft and brown for the chocolate and margarine one and for the chocolate and water I put solid soft pliable brackets ductile right why did we just do that when we're talking about plastics well um, <coughs> I thought that was quite a nice way of seeing how when you mix two substances together Sometimes you get things that are unexpected, and this is basically what plastic chemists do, is they take different monomers, mix them together, and see what happens. And sometimes the results are surprising. So, uh, for example, if you did your treasure hunt um, round your house, uh, yes, if you did your treasure hunt and you found plastics that have triangles with different numbers on them, find the number one, please. Try and be holding a number one in your hand. Much louder in the Facebook comments last yesterday when I was talking about number ones and number twos. Yeah, hold a number one in your hand. Um, if you take a monomer called ethylene glycol, which is clear and sweet and thick and toxic, I don't know how someone worked out that it was sweet if it's toxic, but anyway, this very thick, gloopy, clear liquid, and you take the monomer terephthalic acid, which is a white solid, and you mix them together, you get what you're holding in your hand. You get it's going to have the word poly in front of it, right? Because it's all monomers joined together in this long polymer particle that looks like a piece of spaghetti. You get polyethylene terephthalate, which is PET for short, thank goodness. Here, have a look on the bottom of my Ecova bottle. Here we go. Look, see that? A number one and a PET, a PET. So that's just those monomers all joined together and you get a clear bottle like magic. Um, pet number one, it doesn't react with stuff very easily, at least it's not, not like the first time. So it's very good for keeping food and drinking, that's what it was generally designed to do because you, you obviously don't want to put like water or milkshake into a bottle and have it taste like plastic. So it's not very reactive. You can make it clear, which is obviously also very good if you're trying to sell a thing, you want people to be able to see it. And it is very easily recycled. We don't do it. We're going to do a whole other lesson on recycling and reusing and the problems of plastic. Um, but actually, number ones are very easily recycled. Look! <laughs> this is my underlay that went into my house when we got our house done up. Um, und underlay like insulation. It's just sort of thick, spongy stuff that traps heat so it keeps your house warm. But this one, look, it says made using recycled plastic bottles and there's even a wand and it says PET. Isn't that nice? So the world would be a much better place if we did recycle. It is possible to recycle PET easily. Uh, but yeah, the vast majority of it doesn't get recycled sadly. Uh, one more for the mixing things together. If you mix ethylene or ethene, remember simplest monomer you can get, which is an invisible gas with the monomer vinyl acetate, which is also an invisible gas, you get you ever been to a swimming pool and used one of those awful little floats that have all, like bits coming off it? Um, that's what those two monomers make when you mix them together. Polyethylene vinyl acetate. Um, it's also the soles of flip-flops as well. Crocs aren't made from them uh, because they've got this special other polymer that they use, but fake crocs are made from that kind of stuff. Yeah, two invisible gases together. Plastic science. Very weird. Okay, so... You can mix monomers together and get something good, but we also need to look at how you don't even need two different monomers. You can use the same monomer and get different results. So I'm going to light my candle. If you've got an adult with you and you've got a candle, then do feel free to light a candle and burn a little bit of chocolate and see what happens. But I, it's very difficult listening to stuff and looking at a screen and learning things and burning things at the same time. So don't do it unless you've got an adult with you, all right? You can always do it later. Stretch out the lesson. So I'll get a little bit of the normal chocolate. 
let's let's say that it's polythene okay let's say that all the chocolate particles are ethene and now they're all together they're polythene let's let's burn it and see if we can change the properties here we are so i've got my chocolate as you can see it's quite viscous it's shiny let's give it a burn It's a nice sound, isn't it? Don't eat this stuff. Yeah. Splendid. Whoa. <coughs> okay, so that's what... <coughs> the first thing I've done is create a terrible smell. Oh, let's get rid of all the smoke there. Yeah. <laughs> Check. One of these days, one of these lessons, you're just going to watch me burn my house down, but not today. Have we changed the property? Let's have a look. I feel like you're saying yes, but how? We'd better finish this, finish what we've started. Um, it's become, hmm, this is a good chance to practice some words that we learned last week. What's happened to it? Um, it's become kind of like a powder. It's become, what's a good word for powdery? Brittle, I suppose. Yeah, it's become quite brittle and quite crumbly and it smells terrible, and it's a much darker colour. Right, very quickly then, go on. Finish off, what are the properties of burned chocolate as opposed to not burned chocolate? Come on, fast, fast. I don't think I even bothered to write it down. I've just written crumbly and <coughs> dark brown. Right, come back up here then. Why was I doing that? Well, did you manage to find any twos? Bring your number twos onto the screen. Um, if you had a little look around your house and you found some number twos in triangles on the bottom of your bottles, then you have found a kind of a kind of polythene. But there's different kinds of, of polythene. Um, yeah, to get you thinking about how and why there are different kinds of polythene, I'm going to give you a little puzzle. I hope that you find it interesting and enjoyable and not massively infuriating. I won't take long over it. Do this little puzzle for me, please. Get a pen and paper. Here we are. So here you have a particle, right, that's got five carbon atoms and 12 hydrogens all bonded together. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Yeah, 12 hydrogens and five carbons bonded together. I've put how many other arrangements of carbon and hydrogen particles can you think of? So do some sketches and try and work out how else you could join these carbon and hydrogens together to make particles. The particles will always work if the carbons have four bonds. You've got to make it that the carbons still have four bonds. You see, they all have here. It doesn't matter if some are longer or shorter. And the hydrogens must only have one bond. And you can only use single bonds. No, don't use any. You can't just double them up. OK, do a quick sketch. I gave you a big clue at the start of the lesson. So I think you should be able to do one more arrangement. I think you'd be doing well if you can see how you could arrange them again. But you can. We could do loads of different ones. Come on, I'll give you, what, 10 seconds. I feel like you're either going to, some people are going to really enjoy this and some people are really not going to. <coughs> Three seconds, have you got any? Have you found one? You ready? Okay, I'll show you. So this is the one that you had, right? Hopefully, if you spotted one, you might have spotted that you could just join them all up in one long line. You know, like I showed you um, that that's what polythene uh, looks like in our first little pit there. Lots of monomers all joined together. The other thing you could have done is you could have taken one of the hydrogens away and stuck another carbon there. So all these carbons have still got four bonds, but now they're in a kind of beautiful diamond shape with all uh, hydrogens around the outside, but that still works. So all those particles have got five carbons and 12 hydrogens, but they all behave differently, okay? For example, if you wanted them all to boil, 
The first one, you'd have to make it 28 degrees before it started boiling. The one where they're all in a line, you'd have to heat it up to 36 degrees. And the last one where there's lots of branches, it boils at only 10 degrees. So one of the reasons that they all behave differently is what we call branches. So this bit here where the carbon particles are joined together, that would be a branch, all right? So you can see that like this long chain here, uh, this kind of doesn't have any other carbons branching off it. This has got one carbon branching off it, and this one's got two carbons branching off it, okay? So depending on how branched something is, it behaves differently. Um, if I said to you, I'm going to give you loads and loads of one of those particles, one of those kinds of particles, and you need to fit as many as you can into a jar. Which of these particles that I've showed you do you think would fit together the best? Okay, if you try to pack them all in, if you really want to pack as many as you could into a space, which one would you choose? The first one, the second one, or the third one? Five, four, three, two, one. Hopefully you would, you would say this one at the bottom because it's just a long chain, right? It kind of looks like a pencil. Like the difference between trying to line loads of pencils up in a tin or line loads of forks up in a tin. You'd be able to put the pencils closer together, right? Because they just fit together more nicely. So pick up your number two again. What your number two is, is a high density polythene. So it's ethene particles that hardly have any branches so that they can all be stacked together really closely, right? So there's a lot of them in not much space. High density. And if you look on the bottom, you might well see that it says uh, HDPE, yeah? That's what the cool chemistry kids called high density polyethene to save a bit of time. But there's another kind of polythene where the little ethene monomers are more branched, so, you know, kind of like forks instead of pencils, they stay further apart. They don't pack into a smaller space. And that's useful as well. Um, I couldn't find anything that actually had a number four on it. But if you've got a plastic bag in the house, that will be a number four, or like the wrapper that your bread comes in. So this is LDPE, low density polyethene. The particles are branched, so they're not crammed in as much together. And it makes it very flexible. Which is obviously appalling for the environment in many, many ways. We will, we can't do a lesson on how plastics are made and the environmental impact of plastics. It's impossible. So we're going to look at the environmental uh, impact another lesson. But yeah, for today we'll just say number four, low density polyethene, very flexible. Particles can slide past each other, uh, not very easily recycled, which you might be aware of. Right, Did, should we just finish the plastic treasure hunt? Did you find others? So number threes, uh, is PV, PVC, which is what your gutters are made of. So you might not have found those. PVC, uh, we used to think that it was non-corrosive, like it didn't wear down. And then we, it turns out that actually it is um, sort of leaching, when rain falls on it a lot, it does leach chemicals out of it. Um, if you've got any plastic at home that says BPA free, then that is another example of something that we don't put into plastic anymore. We used to put this stuff called BPA into things like Tupperware, baby's bottles. Turns out it was really bad for us. So, so we've taken it out, you won't find any BPA now, but I thought that your chocolate and water ball that you might have actually, if you go back to it, was quite a good example of how you have to be really careful when you've invented a new plastic, that you've tested it and worked out thoroughly how it behaves. I'm just holding a poo, I know. This whole lesson is just loaded with with poo but um you know i said that it was very like malleable right and squishy and ductile well actually if you come back to it later you'll find that it's become very brittle it's totally dried out if you'd given that to someone as modeling clay then they would not be very happy because a few hours later they would be totally rubbish and become very crumbly um so there you go that's just a little warning that we've got to be careful because sometimes plastics change over time right um yeah, I think, oh, so number five is poly, I'll just go through the answers. Number five is propylene monomers being put together to make polypropylene. I've got number five here. Here we are. So I've written here that it's tough, it's light, it's heat resistant, and it doesn't let moisture or grease in. So you might find that it's keeping stuff waterproof, right? So it's a good thing for keeping food safe. Um, cereal bags are often made with a number five. 
Number six is polystyrene. Total nightmare, right? Talking about density. Polystyrene is basically air. It's really, really difficult to recycle polystyrene because if you bothered to fill an entire massive lorry full of polystyrene and use petrol to drive it all the way to the recycling plant, when you got it there, you'd hardly have any polystyrene. You'd have just gone through all that effort to just carry air around. That's why it's very difficult to recycle polystyrene. Well done if you didn't find any number six. And number seven, um, I have some on my bird peanuts. Number seven is super confusing because it just means other. Could be anything. Again, very difficult to recycle. Well done if you didn't find it. Right. I'd like you please to finish the lesson to have a little look around your room now and find three different ways that plastic is being used. Just look around your room. It's incredible how easy it is to do. Look around your room and find three different ways that plastic is being used. So I'm looking at a picture frame, I'm looking at a printer that's coated in plastic, I'm looking at the keys on my computer keyboard. Write down three different ways, okay? And then when you've done that, can you write down all the reasons you can think of why plastic was used in that situation? So three different ways plastic's been used in the room and then underneath it write down why is plastic being used for that job? Why is it the thing you're looking at not made of wood or glass or ceramic? Okay. While you're doing that, I'll very quickly talk about why plastic doesn't conduct electricity because I'm going to give you the answers in a sec. So if you look deep inside a piece of metal, you will find that all its atoms are very, very neatly arranged in rows and there's electrons floating around, tiny little electrons, little particles, negatively charged particles. And what, elect what electricity is, is just electrons moving around. So it's dead easy for electricity to flow through a wire because the little negatively charged electrons, literally they're free. They just zip around and that's what electricity is. But as we've seen, in a plastic, if you look deep inside the plastic, all the atoms are like a massive cold bowl of spaghetti. They're all mixed up together. There are no free electrons. It's very difficult for electricity to flow through. And heat behaves in a similar way to electricity. So it's, it's also very difficult for heat to pass through and electricity to pass through plastic, which is obviously very useful. If you've ever picked up a metal pan lid, you might have well hurt your hand. Why do they even do that? Pan lids that are made of plastic, the heat doesn't get transferred to your hand. Right. If you've done that activity, I'll give you some answers. And you can have a look at the three examples that I found as well, okay? So why is the plastic being used for that job? How many of these did you write down? Write down some more if you missed them. Um, electricity can't pass through it. It's waterproof. Heat can't pass through it. It's easily molded into different shapes. It can be see-through. Obviously plastic can behave all different ways, but this is like average plastics. This is what plastic can be like. It's light, it's very cheap to produce. It can be difficult to recycle, it's bendy and flexible, and it doesn't react with other substances. So I'm going to give you literally five seconds. Um, here is a picture of an electric cable. Which ones of these are true of that electric cable? Why do we use plastic for electric cables? Why don't you use wood for electric cables? What are the reasons? Six, five, count the number of ways, so I'll tell you which ones I got. Four. Three, two, one. So I think we use plastic for electric cables because electricity can't pass through it, right? Dead important, isn't it? There's electricity flowing through the cable. Obviously, you don't want to touch it and have electricity go into your hand. It's waterproof. You don't want to spill a drink on your wire and for suddenly it all to short circuit and the water get into the electrics. Heat can't pass through it because electricity can make wires hot, right? Uh, it can be easily moulded into different shapes. It's cheap to produce. It's bendy and flexible, um, and it's light as well, I guess. doesn't hurt. Uh, what about this pen, then? Why is this pen made of plastic? Ten seconds. Why is that pen made of plastic instead of, like, wood or glass? Six. How many of those? Five. Four. Three. Two. One. I said that it was cheap. That's probably the main thing, isn't it? People don't keep pens for that long. You, you just buy one then chuck it away so you want it to be cheap. It's easily modelled into different shapes. It's waterproof, I've said, so you don't want water getting into your pen. Um, I think, oh, are those the only ones I put? Yeah. It doesn't need to be bendy, does it? Yeah. 
just to see. And finally then, plastic bottle. Why are we still insisting on putting water in plastic water bottles? What's so great about it? 10, 9, Okay, how many did you get? I've said it's easily moulded into different shapes. Um, it's waterproof, obviously. You don't want water coming out of the sides of your bottle. It can be seafood, very useful if you're trying to flog a food. It's light, that helps, doesn't it? It's cheap to produce. I think this is the main thing with a lot of plastic is that it's the cheapest. It's bendy and flexible, kind of helps, sort of. Um, and it doesn't react with other substances, very important. You, like I said, you don't want your water tasting a plastic. Right. Uh, I've got some I've got some GCSE questions and some summary questions for you. So that is the end of the lesson, except I do want you to try the summary question because I think you'll be able to get it and it's a good way of seeing if you've been paying attention. Oh, but dead exciting, I want to show you the new magazine. So I can only do all these lessons for free, uh, a lesson a week during term time and a show a week as well with a Lego story time. So Saturday morning, Monday night, and uh, YouTube again, half past nine on Wednesdays. I do a little show at Lego Storytime. Next week it's on wolves. You want to come and learn all about wolves? But I can only do it because people are supporting me with five or six quid a month on this website called Coffee. So if you're on Face, if you're on YouTube now, it's in my About section. There's a link to it. If you sign up now, it's a really good time to sign up because I always send people uh, rainbow glasses, which make them see rainbows, to say thank you for supporting me. This is the best job ever. And some information about how the rainbow glasses work. But I also send you Theatre of Science magazine. And I've been sending this one because this was the latest issue on rainforests. My husband is a graphic designer. Super helpful. So there's a bug activity. You can cut out your own bug and mount it. There's a beautiful comic about an insect expert who uh, went to live with what they thought were cannibal tribes and how life worked out for her. Uh, there's a choose your own adventure. Do you die in the rainforest? You might do. But yeah, the new one's just arrived. So I, if you sign up today, <clears throat> I'll send you that one because I've still got a few left and it was the latest one. But yeah, look, the latest one on mould has come. So no one's got this one yet. I'm about to send you this. I've got to say, I don't love the outside, but I had to make the paper a bit shinier because the activity at the back is, you've got to put this box together. I'm going to send you a biodegradable plastic bag so that you can put different foods in your little sort of waterproof tray and put it in a bag and watch mould grow. Um, it's got another choose your own adventure because I'm really into those. You've got a job in a museum. Will you be fired? You might be. You can tell me later. It's got a comic about how penicillin was invented. The of Science mascot Wormy is playing a character in the magazine. I'm just super proud of it. Like I say, it takes me ages but I really love sending it to you. It's like writing you a letter. Thank you to everyone who's receiving the of Science magazine. Look out for your post uh, if you want to get a mould one. I'll be sending it to you probably uh, over the weekend. I'll package it all up. Okay, GCSE questions, here we go. So, summary questions first, because this is the one that I'd really like you to do, the other one sort of just for fun. Complete the paragraph, please, using some of the words below. So, polymers have very something molecules. Molecule means that particle. The properties of polymers depend on what something they are made from and how they are made. Low density polyethene and something polyethene are examples of polymers that are made with the same something but have different properties. And you can choose from short, long, old, monomers, plastics, high density, hard density, or monomers again. And your GCSE questions. Polystyrene is a man made substance. Fill in the gaps to complete the sentence. Choose from the words below. Uh, small molecules called something join together to form something. So, what are the two? words carbohydrates plastics monomers polymers recycled or reused and question number two some plastics are not biodegradable give two reasons why this is a problem this is just brain exercise just out of interest we haven't actually really looked at that today like i say we'll do a whole lesson on reuse recycle revisit and talk about how i think a lot of people are quite confused about what those words mean Then, what, well, how long do you need for that? There's not many answers there, are there? I'll give you what, 30 seconds, and then I'll go on Facebook and see if anyone's left me any nice comments.
Are you done? Can I move on? Let's do this. So small molecules called something join together to form something. Uh, the small molecules are called monomers and they join together to form polymers, which is the kind of proper chemistry word for plastic. Some plastics are not biodegradable. Why is it bad that plastics aren't biodegradable? Um, well, you could have said something like animals could eat them and die or animals can get caught in them or they take up space in landfill, or to get rid of them, you have to burn them, and that releases toxins. We didn't look at those, but well done if you wrote any of those and give yourself a mark at GCSE. And the summary questions, the most important ones, poly polymers have very long molecules, right? Really, really long chains, like thousands and thousands of monomers all stuck together. The properties of polymers, so what they're like, depend on what monomers they are made from and how they are made. So low density polyethene and high density polyethene are examples of two polymers that are made with the same monomers but they've got different properties. Whew. That was a lot wasn't it? Well done if you if you got that. Right I'll, ha I'll hang on there for five seconds so you can write the answers down and then I will flip you around and have a look at my Facebook page to see if you've said hello. <laughs> see if you've said hello or asked a question or pointed out a really obvious mistake I've made at any point during the show. Always super useful. Thank you to the people who do that. Right, there we go. <coughs> Hello. Uh, but yeah, you're totally free to go, right? <laughs> if you haven't left me a comment on Facebook, that is the end of the lesson. Thank you very much for supporting me on coffee if you can, and if you can't, then that's the whole point. Thank you so much for coming to lesson and liking this. Uh, right, let's go to Facebook. It's always a moment of trepidation, right? What if no one's left me any messages? Oh, my regulars here. Oh, three comments. Oh no, that's a that's a different post. That's someone <laughs> commenting on my casual swearing last week. I said I said bloody hell in last week's lesson. Is is bloody hell swearing? It's not nice, is it? But Ron says it a lot in Harry Potter, so I figured I'd get away with it with you lot. It was in context. Remember we were talking about deformation and how deformation means changing the shape of something in physics, but it also means um, when you turn swear words into not swear words, like blooming neck. Right. Uh, oh, here we are. Good. Who is it? Oh, it's Shuki and Arza and Eunice. Hello. I was going to say that you were here. Fantastic. Oh, good. And Mariam, you got Monopoly. Excellent. Well done. You get the 10 bonus points for just sticking the two words together. All right, you lot. Thank you for saying hello. Bye, Shuki and Azo and Eunice. And bye, Mariam and family. And yeah, I'll see you for Wolves next week or um, for next week's Home Ed. We need to do metals and we need to do fabrics as well. And I feel like we should do wood because wood is lovely. But yeah, I'll, I'll plan the rest of them and I'll put the other up soon. Okay, see you later, folks. Bye bye. Thank you so much for coming.